Hey there friends, thanks for checking in. Today we're looking at a Breda M9A3. Released in 2016 and I remember I was one of the first to see it at SHOT Show 2016. I got a quick review on it. I left very much impressed with this and I said to myself one day I'm going to get one of those and the years passed and I've always kept it in the back of my mind and lo and behold my buddy calls me up says he picked one up and offered me to review it so this is his gun and i'm thankful to him for allowing me to do this because these are expensive the msrp is eleven hundred dollars you're looking at between 900 950 to pick up an m9 a3 and they made some major improvements with this and we're going to talk about that but i want to show you the case that it comes in it comes in this ammo case, all right, in the plastic box here. And then when you take a look, you can see the pistol rests in there. Two, seven, or I'm sorry, three, one inserted, and then two additional 17 round magazines. And this grip, this additional rubber grip that we're going to talk about. But a nifty little case there that you can pull that stuff out and use it as an ammo can if you choose. But check out that color. I, I like the way this combination looks. Now, they also offer this in all black, but this here has a Cerakoted slide. I call that a Coyote Tan. And here's the 17-round magazine, which is plus two from the 15-round from the original M9. And this will work in the M9, but if we look at that color in the base plate, they kind of look identical. And I consider that, uh, what I say, Coyote Tan. The frame here is anodized i consider that a cross between like a gray beige look to it and then an fde cerakoted barrel and grip okay that looks flat dark earth some people may call that od green but it's a it's a nice looking well we'll check clear here a nice looking handgun i think it's beautiful looking and yet, of course, it's a Breda M9 that the people love. One of the first enhancements they made is the grip. They slimmed it down a lot. They put nice texturing right there on the back strap and the front strap. But they slimmed it down, opposed to the bump that was offered with the M9. And that speaks to this. If you like that, if it fills your hand, if you become accustomed to that with the M9, the grip is offered to mimic that same feel. It'll be a, a wider grip and, you know, it won't be a great or drastic change for you. But it does have these polymer grips here. Three slot pick rail opposed to the one slot accessory rail. So that is an improvement. Oversized magazine release. All right. Already mentioned 17 round mags. And then we've got larger or shall I say raised sights. Not quite suppressor height sights. But, you know, suppressor height sights would go probably that high. I, I do think you'll be able to see over the can with the 5.2 inch threaded barrel, but they are titanium night sights, okay? So that's a nice touch right there. The decocker thumb safety works the same way, all right? Decocks the gun, renders the gun unfireable. But they also have another lever that they call G mode, and that will allow... The user to use this just as a decocker it will not instantly put the gun in safety and i think a lot of people want that you know i guess it's like 50 bucks you can pick it up throw it on there and then you won't have to worry about putting the gun in safe long beaver tail there already mentioned thinner grip ambidextrous decocker thumb safety anodized frame neat look to it great feel and an excellent reputation with the Beretta M9 models. I think it's cool. It also has a beveled magwell. Not a lot. I've seen them more enhanced with other guns, but it is beveled a bit. You can see from each angle, it's beveled out a bit for those quick mag changes. And I do like the 17 round mags. Now, of course, they make the 10-rounders for those who live in states that require that. Let's go ahead and check out that trigger pull. The single-action pull I am measuring at 4.5 pounds. And here's what the reset is looking like right there. Nice short reset. And the mainspring was also lightened up with this model. It's called a D-spring. I have to believe that stands for double action. But the double action pull 
is smooth. It's nice. A little lighter than the original M9. To disassemble the pistol, you just push that button in and then pull this lever down and off comes the slide. Big beefy rails there. And then here we have an uncaptured recoil spring polymer guide rod and the 5.2 inch barrel right there. No need to take off the thread cap either. Very thick slide walls. Check that out. And then we're going to get it on the scale. I'm really happy to get my hands on this. I, uh, I've been wanting to check this out for a while. I will be taking it to the range very shortly. And I'm definitely looking forward to that. I have always thought the M9 was a fine handgun. And I just can't say that I've owned one. That's, that's what it's boiled down to for me. The unloaded weight. We're looking at two pounds, one and an eighth ounce. We move that to just ounces. We're looking at 33 and an eighth ounce, which is similar to what the website says. I think they said 33 ounces. But I'm going to go ahead and drop 17 rounds. And, oh, it's close to staying. There we go. 40 and a quarter ounces. So there it is. Beretta. M9A3, nice looking handgun, nice performing handgun from what I'm told. I'm taking it to the range shortly. I can't wait to do that. And then uh, we'll do a range review and see what you guys think. But it has a great reputation. And this certainly feels like a quality made handgun. And many people will testify to that statement. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. And you guys be safe.